In this guide, I'm going to migrate MySQL to MariaDB on an Ubuntu server. Now, MariaDB is just an improved version of MySQL, and it's designed to be essentially a drop-in replacement. So in theory, if you've been using MySQL, you could switch over to MariaDB quite easily. That being said, there are some edge cases where the switch might not be as simple as I'm about to describe. And here are some of those edge cases I want you to look through before beginning this process. If any of these things apply to you, I recommend doing a little bit more research before you jump in. And I have a couple articles on the MariaDB website that uh, you should take a look at. It talks about the compatibility. It talks in more detail about the upgrade process. So with that preface aside, let's jump right in. The first thing we want to do is create a backup of our existing MySQL databases. And we're going to do that using the MySQL dump command. We're going to export all of our existing databases to this file called backup.sql. So I'm going to copy this command, switch over to my command line. I'm currently SSH'd into the server where I'm doing this upgrade. I'm going to run that command. And then I want to look for the resulting file in my home directory, which I'm currently in. But if you weren't, you could just get to it via the tilde forward slash shortcut. All right, but once you're in your home directory, let's take a look at our directory contents and just confirm we see that backup SQL file. It's a healthy file size. Uh, if you want, you can open it up in a text editor. So I'll just uh, quickly take a look at it in Nano. All right, and we can just skim through here. And what you see is just a bunch of SQL that is going to uh, recreate all of the existing databases and tables that you currently have in MySQL. Uh, this is what we're going to run once we get MariaDB set up to bring all of our data, all of our databases over. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to exit out of Nano. And with the backup in place, we can now uninstall MySQL. So to do that, there's a handful of commands we're going to run. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the MySQL service isn't currently running. So we're going to stop it with the system control command. Next up, we are going to use apt, our Linux-based package management program, to remove MySQL and any of its related packages from our system. Then we're going to do some cleaning up of some MySQL related directories. We're going to remove them. And then finally, one last command, apt auto remove to remove any uh, dependencies of MySQL that we no longer need. And with that, MySQL is removed from our system. If we were to try to invoke it, uh, you could see it's unable to locate it. All right, so that sets us up for now installing MariaDB. First step for that is we're going to again use apt, and we're first going to update our package index on our server. With our package index updated, we can now prompt apt to install MariaDB. And upon completing installation, it should automatically start the MariaDB service. Uh, just to confirm that that's the case, though, we can run a system control status command. Uh, and we're going to be referencing it as MySQL, even though we're working with MariaDB. Uh, because remember, MariaDB is just a drop-in replacement for MySQL. So from this point forward, anytime we're referencing MySQL, it's actually an alias for the underlying MariaDB service. All right, so let's run this command. Let's check out our status. All right, perfect. We can see that it is actively running. And uh, we can confirm it is actually pointing to the MariaDB server, even though we're referencing it as MySQL. All right, if we type the letter Q, we can get out of this status prompt. And before we start importing any of our data from our backup that we had created, uh, we want to run this script called the MySQL secure installation. It's just going to go through and do some uh, initial security setup things with our MariaDB service. So let's run that. And the first prompt is going to ask for our current password for root, which we don't actually have. We have not set a root password. So I'm just going to leave this blank and hit enter. Next, it's going to ask if I want to switch to Unix socket authentication. Uh, this is a plugin that comes with MariaDB that makes it so that whatever user we're currently logged into our server as is the user will be authenticated with our database as. Um, in other words, right now, I'm logged into the server as the root user. So to the extent that I go to interact with my database system, it's going to authenticate me there as the root user. And this is the protocol that I want to use 
So here, when it's asking if I want to switch to Unix socket authentication, I'm actually going to say no, not because I don't want to use it, but because I know that is what is already being used uh, by default when MariaDB was installed. So I don't need to actually switch to it. All right, so long story short, we're going to enter no here and hit enter. It's going to ask if we want to change our root password, which based on everything I was just saying is really irrelevant. We are not going to be working with a specific MySQL root password because everything's going to be authenticated via the user we connect to our server as. Uh, so once again, I'm going to say no. Next, it's going to ask if it wants to remove an anonymous user that was set up for testing purposes. Uh, we are going to say yes here. We want to clear that out. Next, it's going to ask if we want to disallow root login remotely. We're going to say yes here as well. Uh, this is recommended for security best practices. Basically, uh, in order to interact with the database at the root level, you actually have to be logged into the server to do it. You can't establish a remote connection at the root level. So I'll hit enter on that yes. And then it's going to ask if we want to remove a test database that was set up. And just like we removed that anonymous test user, we want to remove this as well. So I'm going to hit yes again. And then our final yes is to reload our privileges table to make... Uh, sure that any of the changes we've made so far will take effect immediately as it relates to privileges. So we're going to say yes. And then we're done with that security script. So with MariaDB installed and secured, we can now import our data from MySQL. We're going to do that via the MySQL command prompt. Uh, we're basically going to execute the backup SQL file we created at the start of the video. Uh, so let's attempt to run this. Uh, it's not actually going to run without errors. Uh, the first error we're going to get is a reference to unknown collation. And in the world of databases, collation is basically a setting that indicates how data is ordered. And in MySQL, this is the particular collation type that they're using. But with MariaDB, their default collation is something else, right? So here's the MySQL one. It's UTF-8 MB4. That's the version number. AI is accent. Uh, insensitive. CI is case insensitive. So this is just uh, referring how it handles accents and cases, uh, whether it be capitalized or lowercase letters. That's what MySQL is using. MariaDB, however, is using a different version. It's UTF-8 MB4 uh, Unicode case insensitive. All right, all just technical details of how these databases are working with data behind the scenes. If you want to learn more about this, I do have an article where I uh, found out why this error was occurring. It talks more about that. Uh, but for our purposes, all we need to do is go through that backup file and replace any instances of the MySQL collation type with the collation type that MariaDB is expecting. And uh, I wrote a command to do that. It's just a sed command. It's going to do a search and replace within our backup file. Uh, so we can run this as it's written in the notes. And with that complete, let's try to do our import again. We're going to get another error, but it's a different error this time. Uh, so we know that we cleared up the collation error. Uh, and our next error is saying that a table user already exists. Uh, and I did some research on this. And what I found was uh, it has to do with the discrepancy uh, with how MariaDB and MySQL is handling a system-specific user table. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, I do have a link to the solution I found. Uh, basically, we just need to add these two SQL statements to the top of our uh, backup file that's going to modify how that user table is handled to make it compatible with MariaDB. So let's copy these two lines, and then I'm going to open up my backup file. I'm just going to use nano here. And at the very top of the file, I'll paste those lines in. Then I'll save my changes by holding Control X, typing Y, and hitting Enter. And then one more time, let's try to do our import of our backup. And excellent, no errors that time. Uh, so it seems it went smoothly, but let's double check it. Let's go look for our data. And the way I'm going to do that is via the MySQL command prompt, which we can get to with just the MySQL command. Um, now I am prefixing this command with sudo, as I did when I was importing my data. Uh, just so that I'm interacting with my database system as the um, admin user on my system. And this all ties back to that Unix socket plugin I was talking about earlier, where whatever user I'm interacting with my server as is the user I will be authenticated with my database system as. 
Um, now, in my case, it's not necessary that I do this because you can see I'm already logged in as the root user. So technically, any of these MySQL commands, I could just uh, reference them without sudo. It's actually a little redundant that I'm adding sudo here. Uh, but I do include that just because you might be interacting with your server as a different user than root. And because I do want you to interact with your database system as the root user, uh, prefixing with sudo will accomplish that. All right, so a little bit of a tangent there, but I did want to mention it. Uh, but moving forward, let's get into the MySQL command prompt. So we're just going to run this command. Here's what the prompt looks like. Uh, it's basically just waiting for our SQL commands. Uh, and the first command we can issue is uh, show databases. And what you should see here is a handful of uh, system level databases. Everybody's going to have these databases on your system. But in addition to that, you should see any of the databases you had in MySQL. Uh, they should have been brought over as part of our backup and import process. And in my case, that is the case. I had this demo database in my uh, MySQL system. So the fact that I see it here is a good sign. Uh, but let's dig a little bit deeper into that. I want to check and make sure my tables and my data was imported as well. So the next command I'm going to issue is use, and I'm going to indicate the database that I want to use. In this case, that's going to be demo. All right, so it changed me over to that database. And then within that database, I know I had a table called users. So I'm going to run a command, select everything from users. And perfect, that was the data that I was expecting. Um, it's only 10 rows, but this was just an example database I had set up. Uh, for the purposes of this video. Of course, in your example with the real world applications, you're going to have a lot more data, a lot more tables that you'd want to skim through, just double check that everything looks healthy. The other thing you should double check beyond just looking at the data behind the scenes like we're doing here is making sure that any applications that are interacting with your database are still doing so successfully. Uh, and they should because uh, as part of this backup and import process we went through, uh, we also included your system level tables. So any of the MySQL users that you would have been connecting from previously in your applications, they should all be transferred over. So those connections should still work as they were previously. Uh, but of course, you definitely want to test that and make sure that's the case uh, and make sure nothing was broken in the process. But assuming all went well, you should be set up with your new MariaDB system. Uh, if you ran into any roadblocks, anything didn't work as I've shown in this video, feel free to leave a comment below uh, describing what your problem was and I can help you troubleshoot.